that time. It's about that time. As I considered our text, I thought within myself, what a strange subject this is for the first Sunday in January. I mean, here we are in the dead of winter, when the only thing surviving are the evergreens that lay dormant while they wait for a new spring. And still amidst the snow and the ice, the freezing cold and the biting wind, today I still think it's apropos that we talk about planting. I don't know about you, but I love the book of Ecclesiastes. Yes, it's it reads like a Voyager's log book. You know a Voyager, a Voyager who is on a journey in search of the truth. The writer wanders through some mental erroneous thinking before he reaches his final destination which concludes with these words. Here to the sum of the whole matter, fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. Oh, but the conclusion is not the subject of this sermon this morning because long before you enjoy the bloom of a rose, you first have to plant the seed. Yes. Oh, yes. And it's the seed that I want to talk about today. How many of you know that before you can enjoy the plant, before you can enjoy the tree, before you can enjoy the fruit, uh, before you can enjoy the vegetable or whatever you plant, you have to first plant the seed. Right. And you know something, Mother Ford, that's the trouble with many folks today. Uh, they want to enjoy the aroma of the flower without first planting the seed. But that's not the way our lives unfold. God, my brothers and sisters, has arranged our lives in such a way that the secret of our success is to learn first to cultivate what is in our present. In other words, if we are going to achieve anything in the future, if we're going to reap the harvest in the future, it's all about what we're doing right now. Uh, Y'all still not feeling me, so let me make it uh, even a little plainer. If you want to bloom where you are planted, you have to nurture the plant. And so this message today is a youth sermon, so to speak. Now when I say youth sermon, um, I don't want you to get the idea that it is a sermon for youth, but it is, however, a sermon for new Christians or for a sermon for Christians who in this new year want to start fresh. Oh yes, and so let's begin at the beginning and see if we can't figure out how we can improve our spiritual harvest at the end of this year's journey. How many of you know uh, something about planting? Uh, where are my gardeners at? Where, where are my green thumb uh, saints? Uh, now, I tell you right now, I don't know anything about gardening. So I asked the expert in my house, Lady Dix. Uh, yes, and how many of you know that the first thing you need to do before you can plant a seed, you have to clear the field. How many of you know you have to prepare the ground before you can plant uh, the seed. Now it's true that the years from age 1 to 21 are the time when a person develops the main outline of his or her character. Oh yes, a character, a character that will largely determine your history and your outcome. And be that as it may, we must understand that at any stage of your life, God presents you with new possibilities for molding your character into beauty, purity, holiness, and strength. Now, I know what some of you are saying. Some of you are saying, but I've got a past that I have to deal with. And let me tell you something. That's where many folk are wrong. I want you to know that with God, you have no past. Oh, help me somebody. With, with God, your past is a vapor that can disappear in a moment with the simple, sincere prayer of a sinner with a repentant heart. Amen. Oh yes, in that moment, God grants you a clean slate 
sheet on which you can write anything you want to. Uh, listen, and, and don't make the mistake of treating your forgiveness like a new piece of furniture that has to be fitted into an already cluttered room. Oh yes, I want you to know today that you ought to let the Lord throw out the old furniture and remodel your interior. Too many times we try to put new stuff on top of old stuff when at some point we need to pull out the old, clear it out, move it out, throw it out so that God can do a new thing in your life. Oh yes, oh don't mean no harm. I don't mean no harm uh, this morning, but but if I may be real for a moment, uh, that's the trouble with some of us. We hang on to stuff. We hold on to a whole bunch of garbage. By this I mean we hang on to old habits that we know are not good for us. We hold on to stuff. That happened to us, to stuff that was said to us. We hold on to stuff like gossip, stuff like lying, stuff like tipping the bottle, or just plain being honorary and bitter. We are holding on to stuff. And you know what old habits are, don't you? Old habits are, are like those comfortable slippers that we wear year in. And year out, they're torn up way past their usefulness. Your toes may be hanging out. The soles may be coming loose. They're covered with fuzzies. The heels are run over. The insides are tore up. But we keep on wearing them day after day, month after month, year after year. Why? Because they feel good. But I want you to know this morning, if you're going to have a productive 2012, then you've got to throw out the old slippers. You've got to throw out your old habits. Let me tell you something about a planter or a farmer. When a farmer begins a new season, his first move is to clear the soil of all its debris. Yeah. He tosses out the rocks. He pulls up the old root from the last season and he sweetens the soil with some lime or some fertilizer because he knows that last year's stuff can ruin this year's crops. Well, what am I saying? Your stuff from the past, your old stuff that you're holding on to, your old stuff that you're sitting on, you need to pull it up, throw it away so it don't hit you the future. Oh yes, the story. The story is told of an author named Gordon McDonald who shared this with his readers. He said, some years ago, uh, when my wife and I bought our old abandoned New Hampshire farm, we now call Peace Ledge, he said they found on the site that where, he, um, when he found the site that he wished to build a new country home, he found that it was filled with rocks and boulders. And so he told his wife it was going to take a lot of hard work to clear it all out. And the first phase of the clearing process was easy. In other words, the big boulders went fast. And when they were gone, they began to see that there were a lot smaller rocks that had to go as well. But when he had cleared the site of the boulders and the rocks, he noticed all of the stones and petals uh, that he had not seen before. And he said that this was a much harder and more tedious work, but they stuck with it. And then came the day when the soil was ready for planting grass and it was well worth the effort. And I want to tell somebody this morning that if you want to produce for the Lord this year, it's time to clear your field and get ready for planting. Oh yes, it's time to repent of those things that are not pleasing to God and let the Lord give you a clean slate in order to plant a seed that will grow in 2012.